Uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for visiting us here at CES. This is one of our innovation talks. This is where we focus on talking about ways to make more sustainable homes. Today we'll specifically be talking about ways to make homes more intelligent, sustainable, and most importantly, resilient. My name's Will Shippey. I lead strategic solar accounts here at Schneider Electric, joined by Brad Wills. Brad leads the new home builder program here and uh, has been here at Schneider for over 20 years. So thank you very much for being here. We're gonna talk a little bit about the role of technology in building sustainable and resilient communities, specifically homes, right? But first, I mean, let's level set a little bit. Um, you know, why sustainable homes that have energy resiliency? Really, really what type of pain are we uh, helping solve with that? Yeah, so as you look at the resiliency issue, homeowners today are facing an aging grid, a grid that is uh, challenged more and more by the environment, storms and whatnot. We see in California, for example, public safety power outages where the power is turned off intentionally for days at a time. Once, uh, if, the, if the winds get above a certain miles per hour and the, te the temperature's above a certain degree Fahrenheit, then they turn off the power, not for minutes or hours, but for days. And uh, it simply tell you, we think we might turn it back on in five days. So you're faced there now with no power for an extended period of time. So resiliency is becoming more and more important uh, for, for homeowners. And really not just in California, in Tennessee where I'm from, you see it more and more, especially as people move more out into the suburbs or exurbs where the grid is less reliable, they're looking for more resiliency. And one thing also talking about the, uh, the, the power outages, um, you know, specifically I, I live in California, home went out uh, a couple times actually just this past year. And you know that's making um, quite a bit of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, headlines in the news, right? But one other thing I also want to talk about is the fact that you're working with some of the nation's, uh, nation's largest home builders. Can you talk a little bit about the technology that they're actually using on a larger scale, right, to build sustainable homes? More and more of our, our home builder partners are looking at building homes that are not only more resilient, like we've been talking about, but also more sustainable. So they're looking, you know, up to this point, they looked at ways of, well, how can I make the home uh, more insulated so that it uh, can use a smaller HVAC system, for example, use less uh, less power, make it more efficient, um, use more sustainable materials. But they're getting to a point now where after doing that, it's like, okay, how can I, how can I become more efficient, more sustainable? Uh, so they're looking for smart energy technologies. One of those home builders is KB Homes, and I heard something about a uh, new home development that we're working with them on. Can you talk, talk a little bit about yeah. that, what makes that uh, project unique? Yeah, so KB's been a longtime partner of Schneider Electric, and we actually, we actually did two projects with them. The first project was um, in north of San Diego, and it was a proof of concept project just on our smart panel. So 128 homes, all have the uh, Schneider Energy Center in them, and that that allows those homes to monitor not only the total usage, but our disaggregation technology in that panel allows to see the power all the way down to the dishwasher, the microwave, the oven, etc. And then we've combined that with our smart devices to provide control at those those points of use. Then the more exciting project, once we got past that. There's a project in Menifee, California, mm -hmm. where they're doing 219 homes. So we put that same solution that we did in San Diego, but now we've combined it with a Schneider-designed microgrid. So every home in this community has a battery, has solar, but then the community as a whole has centralized batteries. Okay, And the solar on the individual homes is what's used to not only charge the batteries in the homes, but also to charge the community batteries and that community shares in that, uh, those centralized um, battery resources for extended power outages. And then what the, the energy center does for them is when they go off grid, that community will, be, will automatically, every one of those 219 homes will automatically switch to critical loads only, which then allows 
that can get to extend for days at a time, especially with any decent solar production, they'll be able to be very sustainable during extended power outages. Yeah, that's amazing. I also heard about um, every home also being wired for EV charging, even if the uh, the homes uh, don't necessarily have uh, you know EV cars yet. Um, and something about bi-directional charging. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about bi-directional charging? Yeah, so I think one of the one of the challenges a lot of home builders are facing when it comes to EV charging is well, what EV charger do I put in? So they've learned that really need to leave that up to the homeowner depending on what whether they have an EV and what brand of EV they have. But what we have done with the panel is to make that easier to do. We future-proof the home so that when the time to add an EV charger comes, then it's a more simple installation, costs a homeowner less. And then, in addition, we're thinking forward to you know the announcement of the Ford F-150 Lightning, which will allow for two-way uh, power to go, not only to charge the, the F-150 truck, but for that, basically that F-150 uh, Lightning pickup truck to become, is basically a mobile generator, right? And so you have to have an EV charger that allows that bi-directional uh, transportation of the, of the energy to and from the vehicle in the home. But really, the, the challenge to that is not only having that EV charger, but it's just like adding a generator. So you gotta have an infrastructure, a panel, that allows you to isolate that so you're not sending power back out into the grid. And you can, and you can safely uh, direct that power to only the critical loads that, that you want to use. So what I'm hearing you say is this is a community that has three levels of energy resiliency, right? right? A community battery bank, solar on every single rooftop, and then if you have an EV with bi-directional charging, you can charge your home with that. It just, yeah. it, absolutely. Yeah. And then the, the other nice part about this community is all the homes are interconnected. So right. while those, those batteries are individual to the home, they're actually all interconnected as, as one community yeah. microgrid. Yeah. So, yeah. And, you know, so we're talking about these technologies that, you know, obviously help from a sustainability perspective, from a resiliency perspective, but at the same time, there's a lot of technology. There's obviously an upfront cost that a lot of people are concerned about. So you can talk a little bit about potential um, offsets for the cost um, and, and how uh, our home builders are getting around that. It's a difficult equation because you're definitely adding more value, more capability to the solution. But what Schneider's done and you can see it demonstrated over here later, is we've said, okay, if you look at a typical solar install, you're gonna have, uh, beyond the solar panels themselves, you're gonna have four to six different enclosures. Uh, the panel, a backup panel, a transfer switch, etc. We've eliminated almost all of that, consolidated that down into one panel. So imagine just from the construction standpoint, whether that be in a new construction, uh, project or even in a remodel project, you're going to be able to more easily integrate this solution and save on a lot of uh, installation costs. So we're looking to balance that equation by saying, yep, the material may cost you more because you're putting so much more technology into it, but we're going to help you reduce or offset some of that cost with the savings in installation. These projects um, that you mentioned, they're done in California. Um, California is unique in that it requires actual solar to be placed on the rooftops of homes right. for every new home being built, right? How do you see this spreading across uh, the rest of the United States with your partners? Obviously, California with the solar mandate is the, t is the, is the hot point or tipping point yeah. for this, but as we get into this with more and more of our builder partners, the conversations are now turning into, okay, we kind of have California figured out, but there's still a need for sustainable solutions and especially resilient solutions everywhere in the country. So they're looking for how can you, even if you're not gonna have solar panels, how can I maybe have uh, a battery or generator make the home more ready to accept a generator or add on solar or add on a battery in, in the future to provide that sustainability and resiliency. So again, what we've done with, with our solutions is it's a very granular approach where you have a panel and you can have as little as one monitor or you can have that monitor and have every circuit on a smart relay or anything in between. So it gives you the flexibility to really choose what makes the most sense mm -hmm. to have in a, from a monitoring standpoint as well as a control standpoint. 
we really think that as you look at that, what makes a, a lot of sense is in particular in the two poles, the dedicated circuits, because those are your big users, your HVAC, your oven, your electric water heater, your dryer, and they're dedicated circuits so you know when you're monitoring them and when you're controlling them, you're only turning that thing on or off. And then for the single pole circuits or your, your outlet circuits, we have smart devices. So we've integrated the, the smart wiring devices into this same, if you will, grid the plug ecosystem, which allows the homeowner to then say, okay, there's certain things that make sense to control at the panel level. There's certain things that make sense to control down at the outlet level or switch level. And that's a lot of control, right? Yeah. That's a lot of things. Does this require then those homeowners to have to configure those things all the time or constantly monitor it? Or is this something that you can sit back and let it do a thing? A little bit of both, right? So the brilliance of, of our Wiser Energy monitoring is it's a disaggregation technology that you install it in the panel. By the way, it can be retrofitted into any panel. It doesn't have to be a, a smart panel. So you yep. can retrofit this module into any, any load center. One set of CTs around the mains and it sees the total usage, connect it to the internet and walk away. And it's gonna start learning and seeing and reporting back to the homeowner, hey, we saw the dishwasher, hey, we saw your HVC, we saw your TV, etc." So that really minimizes the commissioning, whether that be for the installer, or whether that be for the homeowner down the road as they add and change things to the home. They don't have to go back into that system and add anything to it, right? They, it's just gonna find it for them. Yeah. And then, you know, on the other side, yeah, you put in the smart devices and the smart relays. There's going to be some commissioning there. There may be some uh, some work to be done on the homeowner to personalize that for how they want to live in their home. But really, where we're where we're going with it is, once you've personalized it one time, walk away because, like, we get geeked out about all this stuff, yeah, right? right? It's exciting yeah. to us, but for the average homeowner, this is not this is not entertainment. This is they don't want to become the facility manager of their own home. They want they want to live in their home, enjoy their home, be comfortable in their home, and at the same time save energy and be sustainable. But they but so we're trying to put it in a way where they can set that, kind of set it and forget it, if you will. Right. And live their life and do the things that are more important to them. I really appreciate you talking about this, uh, especially about this new project in California. It's really exciting. I think we're going to see a lot more projects like this uh, here in 2023. I want to thank all of you here, those that are remote. If you are here, please join us. Sign the giant on button here. Punch the punching bag. If you're not here with us, um, feel free to check us out, uh, schneiderhome.com. And thank you again, Brett. Thank you. Appreciate it.